Will we get rid of money in the future, or is that illogical? It probably comes as no surprise to you guys that Litter Nimoy was a hero of mine. He was an intelligent, charming, compassionate, and funny man. And his performance as Mr. Spock created an icon in science fiction. So I thought, what better way to honor his memory than to ask a very Star Trek question? In the future, will we have money? You see, when Gene Roddenberry created Star Trek, he envisioned a future where money was not necessary. We had replicators that could make pretty much anything we wanted when we wanted it, and a seemingly limitless supply of energy. So in that world, money really didn't mean anything. And let's go a step further. While we didn't really see very much of it in Star Trek, I imagine our future is going to be filled with robots, and these robots are going to take over more and more of the tasks that we humans used to do, which leads to the question, what are we going to do? I mean, in a Star Trek future where all of our needs can be met instantaneously, it's not so much of a problem. And in fact, in Star Trek First Contact, Picard tells a 21st century woman that in the 24th century, the acquisition of wealth is no longer a driving force for humanity. How much does this thing cost? The economics of the future are somewhat different. You see... Money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. So what is the driving force? Well, Roddenberry's vision said that once we free ourselves of these obligations, we can pursue our dreams, the things that give us satisfaction and fulfillment, like self-improvement and satisfying our curiosity and exploration. And we can still do tasks that bring us pleasure that a robot could easily do, like gardening and cooking. And I think, I want to live in that future. Now it's time for us to think like Mr. Spock and apply some logic to the situation. So first, let's consider the replicator. In Star Trek, they could create pretty much anything, building it atom by atom instantaneously. In the real world, this is similar to a couple of concepts proposed by K. Eric Drexler, which included molecular assemblers and molecular manufacturing. And here's the good news. It works. We could make a molecular assembler for something really specific, like building a protein chain. But here's the bad news. We can't and we might never be able to build a molecular assembler that could create anything. So in the future, you might be able to get that protein chain, but you probably won't be able to get that cup of tea. Secondly, that limitless energy is a really tall order. Now, if we ever perfect nuclear fusion, that could lead to an energy surplus, which would be great news. Third, resource scarcity isn't always the problem. Sometimes the problem is logistics. Getting food and water and medicine to people who need it sometimes is difficult, even if we have plentiful supplies elsewhere in the world. But here's the good news. The silver lining in all this gloom I'm laying down. I think most of these problems are totally solvable. They just require willpower and energy and, for the time being, money. But as we edge closer to that post-scarcity world, as robots take on more of the labor that used to take up all our time and frees us up to pursue our dreams, maybe we'll find ourselves asking the question, does money mean anything anymore? I've got a question for you guys this week. Do you think in the far future money is still going to be around or is it going to disappear? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure you explain your answer to me. I'm really curious. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like, subscribe to the channel, and check out these other videos over here. And finally, live long and prosper.